with the local food movements is that their proponents never really ask themselves, well, you know, most food used to be local. I mean, even in the late 19th century, uh, the greater Paris area, for example, uh, one-sixth of uh, the surface area is devoted to food production. Uh, now it's mostly uh, produced in those days, and so people build those little walls to create a microclimate. There's still a lot of horse manure around, so about 100,000 tons of produ uh, produce are produced around Paris. And there was no local food movement in those days. I mean, people used to do that because the only way you would have uh, fresh uh, produce was to grow it under greenhouses or a cloche or things like that. But then the railroad comes along and suddenly uh, Parisian producers have to compete with Mediterranean producers, you know, people in either southern France or northern Italy or places like that where nature provides you the heat free of charge. And so obviously they cannot compete. I mean, they work like 17 hours a day in Paris to take care of uh, their things. You know, they put a little cloche on them at night and then in the day, if it's too cold, they put dark mattresses on top and then they're, you know, in horse manure all the time. It's a really miserable existence. So obviously people give up on that. And consumers vote with uh, their dollars, or in those cases, their francs, I guess, and that they buy stuff from uh, longer distances. And so the only reason why we have long-distance trade to begin with is that you can get better quality product at a cheaper price. Otherwise, nobody would bother importing things uh, from long distances. And this is the main thing that local food movements are never able to defeat. Uh, markets deliver what people want, better quality at cheaper prices. And so whatever they do, there's nothing that local food producers can do against, uh, you know, better growing conditions in other locations. We discussed, for example, uh, Mussolini's battle for grain in Italy in the 1920s, where uh, he used to denounce, you know, the slavery of imports. Uh, Italy is not a great place to uh, grow wheat, but of course, Italians are fond of pasta, and I hope that won't get me into trouble for you know, pointing out some obvious things here. But, uh, you know, he sort of promoted his battle for grain, and he won it. But the problem is that Italy is not a great location to grow wheat, and so the only place where you could grow uh, Cereal grains were obviously not in alpine pastures, but in places where, you know, Italian used to grow uh, vineyards, uh, olive or olive trees, uh, citrus uh, orchards, things like that. So in the end, everybody lost. I mean, Italians had to pay more for their wheat. Uh, they lost a lot of uh, currencies from no longer export things uh, that they were good at. Mm -hmm.